Are you looking for comprehensive step-by-step -step guide how to pass Security Operation Analyst Associate Certification from Microsoft for free? Well, I have you covered because in today's video, I will show you all the study materials you will ever need to successfully pass the SC200 certification. As I went through this process multiple times, I recommend you to start with the exam objectives because you need to know what you should be studying for. It might seem obvious to some, but really, Microsoft is changing the exams pretty frequently. And therefore, you will find the material on the internet which could be already outdated. So make sure to start with the exam objectives, which you will find in here. I will provide you with the link in the description and you can click on review the skills measured as of March 4. And if I click on this, I will be moved down to this document and you can read all the objectives that are relevant to this exam. Uh, usually the Microsoft certifications are divided into four parts. We have manage a security operation environment, which is approximately 25% of the exam. And if we scroll down, there will be other categories which you should pay attention to. And here we have configure protection and detections. And some of the changes as of March, I believe will be represented to Microsoft Defender XDR because they moved some of the Defender families under this umbrella. Not some, but all of them actually. So be aware of that. Sometimes it's just changes in the naming schema, but also there are adding new stuff and you need to get familiar with them and the new acronyms and the new namings as well because you don't want to get caught up on the exam not knowing what some product is when you when you learn it but it's just different name right so be sure to go through this just read it get familiar with it and then you can go and start studying for the exam itself and actually if you go a little bit more down you have this section for the study resources you have some links for the documentation uh, you have uh, q a's and microsoft learn which is the most important source for your learning microsoft learn platform is really all you need to get certified for microsoft certification it's always up to date which is very critical when you are taking cloud certifications and if you make an account and log in, your progress will be tracked. You can actually level up. So I have a new account and I am level two, but I have also a separate one when, where I am, I think level 12 or something like that. So it gives you experience as you progress. And it's like another level of satisfaction when you are learning, which is very cool. The different subjects on the exams, when I show you the different categories, are also divided into different modules. So you can revisit some modules if you are not feeling comfortable with the material. Also, in each module that you are going to study, there is a knowledge check. So if I click on this, I have multiple questions which I can use to try evaluate if I have everything remembered. The knowledge check is an awesome way to get tested. And if you fail something, you can revisit the material and study more further and more in depth if it's not clear to you. When it comes to SC200, you have multiple modules that you can study for. I will provide you all the modules in the description so you don't have to try to find them one by one. Once you are done with the Microsoft Learn modules, I would advise you to do some practical hands-on. Do some labs related to the material that you are learning for. For Operation Analyst Associate, you will find a content directory which have different labs prepared for you. So when it comes to Microsoft, let's say you are interested into configure Microsoft Sentinel environment. So if I click on this, I will be presented with a learning path related to this lab. And just a little bit down, you get to see what are the steps that you are required to do to pass this lab. You have this link 
to the interactive lab simulation which is available to you so if you click on this you will be moved and you can go through the lab step by step i wouldn't say it's a must have to pass the certification but i would definitely spend some time going through those labs because at the end of the day it's not about passing the certification but about getting the knowledge and knowing how to apply them in the real world scenarios so really spend some time going through those labs they are completely free and you don't have to spend any money after hands-on labs i would do practice exams for that you can use assessment from microsoft which are 50 different questions about the topics that are related to the exam with practice exams you will figure out your weak sides and you can focus your studying efforts on things that really matter and that's basically it you don't need really anything else although there are other resources that i will still recommend you to go through if you want to the very first thing is to dive deeper into kql actually if we go back to the study guide and I search for KQL. Uh, okay, actually, if we go back, there was an... In this section, you can see that this was added to the new exam objectives. So there is also a section now for hunting for threats with KQL. But what I wanted to show you, because there is a lot. Um, you have identified threats using custom query language. You have configure schedule query rules, you have configure near real time query rules with KQL, and there is a lot. You have the entire section perform threat hunting, which is 15% or up to 20% of the exam. And a lot of this is for KQL, which is very important to learn. So that's why I would spend a significant time learning the language because I Personally, I had a lot of questions related to KQL and the different operators. So you really need to know how to use it. This GitHub repository is brilliant. I love the series. There is also a videos for each section. And this should give you a very good baseline of what the KQL all about and the important operators. There is also uh, another series. But I think the master KQL is more than enough to pass the certification. And if you want to spend even more time when it comes to investigation and learning the concept of security with the Microsoft tools, you can go ahead and do Castor Detective Agency, which will give you also a badge once you finish. So this is like practical hands-on training with the KQL. You will be provided with a lab and you can train the operators in there. Another step further is Who Hacked. It's an interactive game provided by Microsoft. And your goal is basically figure out who is the hacker inside the company. I'm a huge gamer and this is basically an interactive game to practice your knowledge. So I'm really in love with this. And if you love gaming as much as I do, give it a chance. It's a great way to apply your knowledge when it comes to the exam objectives. And for the people that need physical book inside their hands, as they are studying for the exam, I would use this exam reference guide from the Microsoft itself. Actually, the author right here, uh, Sarah, is one of the co-producers of the security podcast related to Azure. So you cannot go wrong with this one. My final recommendation, you could also use ChatGPT to generate you some practice exams. Although be very careful with this one, because the free version 3.5 isn't up to date with the latest stuff and the ChatGPT 4 could be tricky sometimes. And you should always verify the information presented to you. Now you have everything you need to successfully pass the certification. You will find all the resources in the description and if you found the information valuable, please subscribe and like for more content in the future.